Well, hello. This is Jan from the Fuzzy Duckling back with our third video on how to watercolor our flamingo. In the last two videos, we talked about the supplies you needed, the type of paints and papers to get, and we drew our flamingo and inked our flamingo. So now we are ready for actually what we've been waiting for all along is to get into that paint and paint our flamingo. Now, some of you, many of you may have already worked with watercolors and know everything about your set of watercolors, but some of us, this is new to. So I'm going to show you a step you need to do before you actually start to watercolor. Here we go with more things to do. This is my old set of Crayola watercolors. And as I've said earlier in this video, we're going to use a fairly inexpensive set so it's easy for all of you to get a hold of and you probably already own this. So when you first get out your watercolors for the day, you need to dampen them. And one of the easiest ways is just to get a handy dandy spray bottle. Now my spray bottle is very generous with water, so you might want to find one that's not overly generous. <laughs> Mine likes to give a lot of water out. But it'll do for today. See, Be sure I have all the colors I want. Now you don't want to put so much water in here that they're flooding out over the edges of these little pans. That you don't want. Or actually there's places I got too much water where it's splattering them out into the neighboring paint. So I'm going to have to look into getting a smaller sprayer. Or you know an eyedropper would work good or something along that line. Even a big fat brush and drop water in works. But the first thing you need to do with a set of watercolors, if you haven't used it before, or if you've never done this, is to make a swatch. Because when I look at these, it looks like I have an awful lot of really dark colors. Now, I've got some nice, beautiful, bright yellows and oranges, and here's a nice, bright green and a lilac. But look at all these. Just by looking at these colors, it's really hard to tell what they are. And you need to know what your colors look like when they've actually been put on a piece of paper with water. And now this is a swatch I have started. And a swatch is just where you make a sample streak of every color that you have in the order that they sit in your pan or your tray here. So this color is this color. This color is this color. So when I'm working and I want to know what colors I have available, I just need to look at this and go find the appropriate paint because it won't look the same when it's wet as it does when it's dried in your pan. Look at the difference. These are bright, beautiful, vibrant colors. But in here they look just kind of eh. Now I've done all of mine except the last two and I wanted to do the last two with you. Be sure you have your paper towel on hand. Get your brush nice and wet. Now we talked about the brush going into a point. Let's see if I can get mine into it. Yep, see that nice little point my brush went into? And you want your brush just to be able to do that to watercolor with. So let me move my paints over here real quick. Try not to uh, spill any of it out. Get my swatch card. And I just used one of the cards we cut from our watercolor paper the other day. And I'm just going to lightly dip into the last two colors here. I've got a little paint here, and I'm just going to do this. Look at that beautiful color. See, when I first got this set, I would have never dreamed I had this luscious pink. It looks like a bright red in the pan. But on my paper, I have this wonderful pink that I use on my flamingo. Now, if you don't have a pink in yours, you can use red. You add a little extra water to that red and you'll get pink. But I love this one they have in my set. Now before you go on to swatching your next one, swish your brush around in your dirty water container. Rinse it off on your paper towel and go into your last color. Now I didn't get much water on that one just because I don't really care too much for my spray bottle. It's going to have to do another job and let me get another one for painting. And here we go. We're going to swatch that gray out. 
I do like this 24 color set. It gives you a decent amount of colors to use without having to mix colors. And mixing colors is not something we're going to worry about with this picture. We're just going to enjoy what we have. And so if you don't have 24 colors like I do, it's fine. I think everything that we do, you can use one of these colors, one of the basic colors to do it. So there, I finished my swatch card. Now, just don't tuck this away and hide it. Keep it out where you can see it while you're painting because you can look at it now and say, oh, I want some yellow for the eyes. Which one should I use? Or, oh, I want orange eyes and find out which one it is I want to use. Now that we've got our swatch card done, the first thing we need to do is figure out what color we want to make our flamingo. Now you don't have to do a pink flamingo like I did. You could do a blue flamingo, a purple flamingo, a green flamingo. This is your painting. But I just like the combination of these colors and I like the color of flamingos. So I went with a pink. Now I have a pink on here that I know I want to use. You may not have a pink. You can use red. So, let's start out. Choose the color you want for your flamingo. Now, we're going to use a method. I don't think there's a name to it. I think this is the Ugly Duckling method. Do you notice we have all this kind of a shading that looks really hard on here? See, we've got darker shadows here. We have our pink flamingo and then we have highlights. Hey, there's an easy way to do this. We did the same thing on the flowers and the leaves. And I'm going to show you that. We're going to start out using something that they kind of call wet on wet because we're going to put just some plain old water on our paper first and then we're going to add paint to it. But even at that, we're going to do that a little different. There's probably a fancy name for this, but we're just going to, um, hey, we're just going to go for it. So the first thing I want you to do You've got your water, you've got your paint. And if you're right-handed, put your water and your paint right there at your right hand so you're not always carrying it over the top. If I had my paints over here and I go over here and get paint and then I come back, I'm liable to splatter paint on my picture. And I have done that. I don't know why. At first, I always put my water over there, put my paint over there, and then I'm always crossing my picture. So if you're right-handed, put your water and your paint right over here. If you're left-handed, do it the opposite way. Then get your handy-dandy paper towel. Hold this in your left hand, and you're ready to go. So I'm going to get my brush stamp. And I want to keep my brush fairly wet at this point. Not so it's dripping off, but it's nice and full of water. And I'm going to come along and put water, oh, about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of my flamingo neck there. I didn't go clear across it. I didn't touch the ink line. I'm going to come in. I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to do the neck first and then we will do the head just so that you can take more time and not have to do a big section. I didn't touch the line. I have dry paper in the middle. Now I'm going to go dip into my paint. You can't see my paint there, but I'm going to get a little bit of pink paint. Oops, out of camera. I just got a little bit of pink paint, not a lot. Now, when you have water in these little pans, don't have so much they're overflowing. Have enough, there's a little puddle right in the middle, but you still have some rather dry edges. So if you want to get really wet paint, you dip in the puddle. If you want a little drier paint that will be more intense, then you, you dip right on the outside edges. And that saves you a lot of work. Now, where this water was wet, and I've talked so much, it's almost gone. We just want to drop paint in. I'm going to get a little more. And I'm going to drop paint right in my puddles. Now, if this dried too much, this wouldn't work. And you'd have to go back in and add some water. Now, while I have these here, I'm just going to move the pigment around very lightly. I'm going to bring it down to the edge where my ink line is. See, now I'm not scrubbing. I'm using feather texture. Texture. I'm using a feather weight here. I'm barely touching it. 
I'm not pushing the paint into the paper. I'm just moving it around with the tip of my brush. Now, again, I say you have to do this while it's still wet or it won't work right. And if it starts to dry out on you, just add some more water with your brush until you get it where it's wet enough to do that. Now, I'm going to come over here and do this edge the same way. See, this isn't hard, is it? Look at the effect you're already getting from it. Now, if you have learned other ways of doing that, that's fine. We all develop our own techniques and ways of doing things. A video like this just shows you some options of what you can do. Now, before this is totally dry, I want to come in here and kind of, it's kind of a flip, flip, flick <laughs> up just to kind of sew some texture because there are uh, feathers and things here and shadowing. I'm going to do that on both of these edges. You know, take, take your time on this, but you have to hurry a little bit too because you don't want this to dry. There we go. Wasn't that fun getting that paint onto your picture? Okay, I'm going to clean my brush a little bit. I'm going to wipe it down. Now, what I want to do is, let's see, I want to add a little bit darker for shadows right along those edges. So now I'm going to go into my red. If you had to start out with the red, then you'll want to go into the drier parts of your red where um, it's a little thicker and more... Uh, pigmented. I'm going to come along with the red and put a little red right here. Not a lot, just a little right along here. And yes, I am dipping on every once in a while. It runs up when I run out. And now I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to kind of scrub this red to the edge where my line is to make my shadow line. And don't hurry with this. There's one thing. There's always water. And if this dries and you get right back in there with some fresh water, hey, it'll mix right back up again. That's one of the beauties and one of the hard things about watercolors is because you add water and it rehydrates, which is good or bad depending on what you want. Now I'm going to wipe my brush off. And now I'm going to just kind of flick and blend my shadow color up here into that pink and it could be I want to get rid of a little bit of this excess and when I do I just wipe it off wipe it off onto my paper towel now don't worry this is going to look a little darker than you probably want it it always dries much lighter then it's going to look at first. And you don't want to leave any puddles around. If you leave any puddles at this stage, it probably isn't going to look right. Basically, we're trying to blend in the shadow to the pink. There you go. Now, this is a little darker, but I think when it dries, it's going to be fine. Now, we need to do the same thing to this side. So, I'm going to dampen my brush and get a little more red and just dot some red along this top. There. And then now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring it up to the edge. You're just moving pigment around in water, basically. And then once you have that pigment where you want it, you let it dry. It's really as simple as that. And we make it so difficult. Like we do so many things in life. We make things so difficult. And we feel like we have to follow everybody's rules and what everybody thinks and everybody's opinions. And yet, everybody, quote, everybody isn't always right. Many times it's just best if we develop our own methods and what works for us. Get that all softened in there. Now, we have our basic pink color. We have our shadow. Now we want to paint our highlights. Don't go get more paint. Just get a little water on that brush, and you're going to kind of scribble. <laughs> Don't put pressure on this. 
we're trying to bring a little bit of the color that's already there into the center as our highlight and if you go it's like butterfly wings you don't want to put pressure on this just a tiny bit will get pulled away from what you've already painted no need to go get more paint if you go get more paint it's going to make it a lot darker and this is supposed to be a light area and when when it stops pulling you just need to get a little more water on your brush look how far I've gone on this and I haven't had to renew the water on my brush you just have patience sometimes you might pull more in than you want and you can just push it back wipe your brush off and keep going in some ways watercolor is very forgiving in that you can dab it off you can brush it off adding more water taking water away is how you control your colors now look at that we have our neck done wasn't that easy actually in some ways I think I would like to have this a little pinker so I'm going to go in and get some water and I'm going to bring this down a little more yet because when I look at it from a distance it's actually a little lighter than what I want so all I did was get a little more water on my brush come up here and bring down some of that color a little heavier now I don't like those little streaks there dry my brush off come back up and pick those streaks off now let's see if I can bring up a little more of this always be aware of how much water you have on your brush sometimes you want a lot and sometimes you just want a very damp brush and this will be something you will just have to practice to learn how much you really need but it's not going to take you long this is where you will develop your own style now I am I actually almost got maybe darker than I wanted but I can lighten it up now by bringing in some of this and wiping it off so that's just something you'll need to play around with now if you don't like what you've done on this picture don't quit I, I ha kinda have a policy I don't always follow it I try to that if I'm doing a picture whether it's in colored pencils or markers or whatever it's in and I'm painting along and ooh I don't like the way this is turning out and the tendency is just to stop and start over well if that's what you do and start and stop over over and over again you'll never get a picture done and you'll quit my advice is just keep going and finish the picture you may not like the picture but finish it because I'll guarantee you'll learn something while you do that picture that you will do better the next time and then even though you may want to hide it and burn it and never let the light of day see it keep it because someday when you become really good at watercolor you're going to want to see that and you can laugh at your very first pictures but you'll also see the growth you had by just keeping on and doing picture after picture until you get it the way you want it you may do a picture a dozen times and then oh this one I like because of the things you learned the 11 times before now we're going to do his head so and with some water now this may be a little pinky because I have some pink water now left on my brush I'm going to come along this edge I know you probably can't see the water if you can arrange your light in such a way that you can see where the water is shiny on your page that really helps now if I tip my head just right I can see the shine you don't want big puddles you just want shiny paper okay now I'm gonna go into my pink just like I did here I'm gonna make dots Woohoo! see that one got carried away I had too much water on my brush luckily it wasn't so much that we can't use that and that's what you would do if you were covering much bigger spots come along and push this color to the edge meet up with the neck here
All right, now I need to go in and get my darker red for my shadows. I'll try to be a little more careful about how much I drop in there. But it worked just fine. And you notice I'm not worrying in these pictures from which direction the sun's coming. When you get more proficient and you have a light source, you'll need to worry a little bit about what direction the light is coming from. We're just going to make shadows as if hey I don't know as if what these shadows work we're just kind of going around the outside edges and creating some contrast and shadowy looks now these guys kind of have a cheeky here so I kind of like to bring up some of my shadows just subtly to make that kind of circly cheek we want to come in and meet the shadow from the neck little bit of shadow where the beak hooks in. Let's blend this in where it meets the neck there. I see I got a little bit. Just go back and fix that. And there we have our shadowing. Now I want to blend that shadowing a little bit so I need to dry my brush off a bit. And just softly, I'm actually doing little circles with my brush softly blend that in now if you have too much of a puddle here yet it won't blend real well so you might need to remove a little bit of water just by dipping in the water on your picture and then rubbing it off on your paper towel you notice a paper towel is a very important tool to have on hand it's probably just about as important as your brush <laughs> In, I just say it's as important in controlling your water. And water is one of the most important things with watercolors. Now, my brush is dried enough and it has little enough paint in it right now to continue making my, well maybe not, let me work, get a little off, making my soft highlight here. Now we could come in here and add a little bit different color. A little bit of yellow dropped into wet paint here in the center makes a pretty highlight. Now see, I'm not getting anything done. I need to add just a little bit of water to my brush. So I can come back in here and uh, pull up my paint. Yeah. I'm, in a way, I'm probably talking too much and not painting enough so things dry. It shouldn't take too long for anything to dry using this method. Now, when you do a lot of wet and wet, where you put almost put a puddle on your paper, if you get too much water on your paper, it takes a while to dry. And you have to wait it out. Or use a, uh, a heat gun or a very softly blowing hair dryer or fan. But if you don't over wet it, usually you don't have to wait too long for things to dry. See, I'm just gently going over and over this to get it in there smoothly. Now what if I wanted a little more highlight there? I would get a little water on my brush. I would dab it in there, I would rub it off, dab it in, rub it off, and you see how slowly and s after several times I can get a little bit more of a highlight worked into there. Now if you had too much, it's just the tiniest little drop on there. If you had too much water, it'll take more off than you want. But this is something you just have to learn and play around with. See, we have the basic part of our flamingo done. And oh my goodness, look at the time we've spent. We better move on. Now, here's a secret. Till this is dry, you will not want to do anything with water that touches this. We could skip on down and do this. But don't do this part until that is dry. So let's do the black beak. I'm going to clean off my brush a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing with this that I did with the other. I'm going to make 
a line of water and my line of water is just a little bit pink that's all right he's a pink flamingo and I'm going to be using black which will cover it right along through there you may even be able to see that with that tint of pink in there into my black paint black paint is kind of odd it is hard to get you won't get a dark dark color now in contrast it probably looks dark but it's not as dark as you would get with other types of paints and uh, markers and things but watercolor is a translucent type of paint you're not going to get the intense coverage and darkness now I've gone around with that I'm going to take it out to the edge so I say you feel like you have to hurry and in some ways you do need to finish the section before you quit if you decided you needed to go cook dinner or whatever but don't hurry to the point where you make a lot of mistakes because you can always add the water back or dampen it and take the paint off until you know it's been dry for quite a while there we go now I'm going to try to dry this a little bit I don't want all of this going into my center now in fact it wouldn't hurt for that to dry a little bit now I'm going to pull that into his beak I like to make these little pulls in the direction of say this see their beaks are kind of circular around so that the shadows would fall kind of in that direction now I want this center to be fairly light and I still have a lot of pigment there clean my brush and I think we are going to give this a little fan and dry it a little bit now I do have a heat dryer here but they're very noisy and I don't think you'd enjoy me using this on the video although I think I will so you can see one it won't take long <laughs> these are noisy but they don't blow things around like a hair dryer will they just put out heat now you see I can get that light gray coming off of there that I wanted as a highlight here around these edges I can still see a little bit of gloss on it not totally dry but it's not puddly where it's going to give me too much pigment in my gray area you know if it does remember just dip your brush in water and dab it out there we go now while we're waiting for these two things to dry so we can do this middle let's go do a flower you, I don't know what choices you have for flowers I'm going to do this soft lilac flower so again now for this I'm going to be sure I have a puddle in the middle of my lilac I'm going to come into each petal and circle around the edge in fact I think I need to spray a little more water into my paints okay here we go a circle around each petal and see it's still the same idea as what we were doing earlier we're going to do a circle of color around the edge I would suggest you only do one flower at a time dip your brush and come back in and bring your color out to the edges this is what will give you that kind of a pretty shaded look it's a very light and airy look and this is definitely not the only technique that gets used with watercolors there are many techniques you can find a lot of these online in watercolor tutorials now I want to go in and 
pull my color into the light centers Again, I remind you, if this is the first you watercolor, you probably will hate your first picture. You may hate your first 20 pictures, but keep at it. Number 21 will probably be one you love. Now, I'd like to add a little dark around the edges. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to kind of go to the edges of my, my uh, paint here and get a little more pigmented colors coming in here see if I can get that and that there we go smooth my petal out one more thing I want to do to it now as I want to add a little much darker I'm going to go to my darker purple and add some shadows right around this center area now pull some of that up into the center of each petal now what we seem to well I always feel like I want to do I want to go put that center in now but no I need to wait till my petals have dried Now let's do our next flower's petals. Now you'll notice some of these crazy little lines I have here. If you uh, watch the other videos that come before this one, you'll remember I drew very heavily so you could see the lines and uh, they don't erase well. And I warned everyone, you want to be sure and draw lightly so your lines don't show like I have through here. It's not that there's any graphite from the pencil left. It dented the paper. And that will always show on this picture. I don't think that they can be fixed. It's not too bad. From a distance, probably can't see them, but that's okay. My centers aren't quite as light as I'd like. And I think by the time we add our darker pigment in there, that will be fine. So I'm going to go get a little bit from the edge of my lilac to darken these tips up. It's not much, it's pretty pretty subtle. But it still makes your picture look pretty. Now we want to darken the center with my darker purple. Land that color up into the petal. And I think that'll do. We just now have a couple more petals. Well, I guess three more petals down here. And we'll do them the same way. Bring our color to the edge. In fact, I'm going to add just a little bit, just a little bit of water to my brush. You know, you're almost done with this picture. Try it a little bit. Bring our color to the center. A little bit of eraser crumbs, I think, in there. I tried erasing those lines a little better, and uh, I got crumbs going. 
All right, my little darker lilac for the edges. Ooh, we got some good dark lilac that time. Just the smallest little tiny dot of dark purple down in here. There we go. Our flowers and petals are done. Let's do our leaves. If you've looked through your greens, you've probably found the green you like. I find I like this green right up here for my leaves. I've already got my paint damp, so I'm going to come along, wet down the edges of my leaf. In fact, I think I'm going to just go ahead and do this one too because these leaves are small. Now I'm going to get me some fairly wet green and in it goes. that green out to my edge I find if we had put our water line up to the edge it has a tendency then when I add more color to it to want to bleed off the edge which mm, I really would rather it wouldn't do that so by leaving that space we kind of eliminate a lot of the edge bleed as we're moving it onto drier paper rather than wet. down there at the base because that will be shadowy. I'm going to dry my brush off a little. In fact, I'm going to dry this leaf off a little because you can tell I got some little puddles working there. We don't want those puddles. Dry it a little. Now, it would be pretty in foliage if you wanted to come in here and put some very light, lit, uh, light yellow in the centers. It would be very pretty or very light brown and probably even like a red but in our picture today we're just lightening up with our green color which I still think looks pretty neat so there's our leaves we don't have too much more to do how about we do the flower centers oh no yes we can do the flower centers but see I made a mistake in that this was still damp and I came in here and I did this green leaf. Do you see what happens if you paint next to something that's still wet? That color will bleed right into your new color. So that was good. That showed you why we don't go next to something wet. I think we're safe enough to go over here though. It should not be touching anything wet there. I'm going to make this part of the beak kind of a tannish brown. I see pictures where they've done the beaks of all different kind of colors. A lot of them even just do that kind of a pink. So um, you'll have to look through your colors and see if there's something there you like that can be a good beak color. And I'm sure the sets vary. But we're going to do this again the same way we've done everything else. Plain wet water down. Dab in our color along these edges. And then move it into the edge line here. The more you do this, the easier it will get. Oh, 
Okay, I want to dry that a little bit by dabbing up. And then we will work our color in just a little. Just like that. There's one of those lines from my pencil. You do this once to a picture where you draw too heavily and you have to put up with pencil lines. You won't do it much longer. Now, my black wasn't as dry as I thought it was. And there's a little bit of bleed. I'm trying to hurry and get this done for you guys. But this will be a good lesson to tell you so you see always let the different sections dry. And be sure they're good and dry. Now I'm going to pull some of this color lightly across. I need to get a little bit of water on my brush. Sometimes I think I paint. Sometimes I think I talk more than I paint and then I have to get things wet again. There we go. I'm going to take a little darker brown if I can here. I didn't get it wet. And darken this shadow up right here. I'm lucky this set has two browns. A light brown and a dark brown. Yours may not have that. Work this in to blend it a little bit. Do you see how close we are to being done? Okay, let's go in and let's get the eye. I want to do the eye a nice bright yellow. So I'm going to go into my yellow and here we go. Now I went over in the black a little bit so I'm just going to kind of push that away with my brush and get rid of that. And I'm also going to do my flower centers yellow. Come in here. Is it dry enough? I think they're dry enough. Get my flower centers and then all we'll have is the background. And while this is drying there is one more thing you'll need to get. And it should be fairly close. I think everybody owns this. You need to go to the kitchen and get you salt. Plain old salt. Any kind of salt will work. Put a little bit in a tiny container so that you can get in and get it with your fingers. This is what gives you the spotted effect in your background. And you'll want this ready before you start laying down that background because it has to go in while your background is wet. Well, I am going to dry this so that I can show you how to do that background. Now you may wonder how to know if it's dry enough to paint. The gloss needs to leave. When you look at it, you don't want to see any shiny spots. Now I have a little bit left, but I want to get this picture finished so that you can see the whole thing. So I'm going to go ahead and try it. But it's best just to be sure and let it set a little longer than even you think it should be. Now I've got my salt ready. I have my water. I know what color I want to use. I want to use this kind of aqua turquoise color. I'm going to I'm going to start here. I'm going to wet down this section all over with just clean water. Again I want to leave a little bit away from the edges there. And I like to have my edges a little ragged looking. As you can see, the edges aren't real smooth in my picture here. I, I like that on purpose. Okay. I'm going to come clear down in here. 
Now I'm going to go get my green or my aqua and I'm going to drop it in. I want it to look like he's standing in water and everything got kind of splish splashed around like a wet windshield or a wet window. So now I am going to move my paint in next to my flamingo. Try not to put any aqua on my flamingo. Now, because I am a little damp yet, I think I'm doing a, it's getting a little bleeding in it. But we'll work with that. Now, I don't want my background to have a real super smooth texture to it. I want it to be darker here and lighter here and kind of raggedy there. I would have to smooth this out a lot more if that wasn't what I wanted, but that's what I want is it to be just kind of messy looking, like water splashed on it, which it has, hasn't it? Come down here, be sure my little flower is included in this painting. He might not feel included if I don't put some color around him. Now, here's where you do the secret thing. You have to try to control it. Don't get it all over. Pinch up just a little bit of salt. Sprinkle it on the wet part here of your background. And we're doing this in sections because by the time you do the rest of it, this might be too dry. And don't drop your brush on it like I just did. I'm going to move those around a little bit now. And just let it stay there. Don't do anything with it. Brush off any salt that got on this part. This is where another old brush can be handy. Brush this clean because we need to do the same thing to this part. So, I'm going to lighten that up just a little bit while I'm here to do it. The more water you do this with, the lighter this will be. And this is coming up maybe a little bit darker than the one I just did. And I could have lightened that up a little bit more, and I didn't, but that's okay. Now I need to get more water, and we're going to fill this whole section. Now I'm going to think that I might have enough paint on my brush already to spread through these parts. We'll just see how that works. I need to go get my turquoise, dab it in there. I think this is the prettiest color. These, these may be inexpensive sets, but I do think they have some very pretty colors in them. And we'll bring this up to our flamingo. Kind of like we're smoothing it to the edge and then dabbing the rest of it. I want to keep that uneven edge there. Whoops, I went over and I'm going to use my... We'll have to work on that in a bit because I don't dare stop on this now or it's going to dry on me. I think that's one of the mistakes that still bugs me the most is when I get paint where I don't want it. Because when, if I remove that paint, it will also remove my purple. So it'll take a little bit of work. But I'm trying to hurry so I'm not being quite as careful as I should be. So I want to get this video done for you so you can get to painting. And uh, it's been a fairly long video already, hasn't it? I hope you've learned something from this and have enjoyed it. We're going to try to do more videos with our watercolor, with our different themes and projects through these months. Here we go. We're just about. I'm going to take some of this darker color up here and bring it down here. That way, you never waste pigment. Use everything you can, and then then you can. 
brush it off. I'm going to use some of this dark pigment to get in here. Some of it for this little spot. This little spot. Here's a little spot. And if this is darker than I like, I can come in and pick some of it up. Although I don't mind this. Now, I need to get some more salt. Not real heavy. You just want it to be light. like Not like a blizzard, like a few snowflakes. <laughs> and this has to dry. Now, for some reason, my picture tended to want to puddle there. And now I'm going to have a very light spot there. But, you know, if it's caught in time, like this one was, I can just bring some of this pigment over. My paper kind of warped there for some reason. And that is something you will kind of have to put up with, is if your paper decides to do something, <laughs> like make a little warp that you didn't expect, you just work with it. Bring some of this pigment over here. I've got like this little hill that wants to run my paint down into a, a little valley. Okay, the next thing you need to do is let this dry very well. Now, I may not be quite as dry as need be, but I want to get this finished for you. Once you're to that stage, take another brush. Just brush the salt off and look at those cute little speckles. Wouldn't this be great to make an actual snowstorm scene with, say, a dark blue sky? and put these in there. It would look like snow. I think that's something I'm going to have to try. Now carefully, very carefully, take off your painter's tape. And even though it doesn't seem like it's going to stick to your picture, sometimes when you least expect it, it will pull up some of the texture from your paper. So you want to do it very carefully. Now, if you remember, I did very dark lines when I drew my picture that are almost impossible to get rid of. But I will get rid of the parts I can here. And there's one way I could salvage this. I could take some washi tape and make a little frame around there with washi tape. And then this would never show. But there we go. I hope you have enjoyed painting your very first flamingo picture and possibly maybe your very first watercolor. So, we'll be back with some more projects. Next month will be a new theme and we will try some drawing and some painting and who knows what we'll be doing. It'll be a surprise. So, until then, I'm going to say bye-bye for now.